The other day we installed a modified inverter cooking system which would allow rusty iron van to cook using the inverter and the rice cooker even without a house battery. You can see the inverter is hooked up right now. There is no battery hooked up other than the battery that's under the hood which I'll show you here. This is the vehicle battery which is serving as a house battery. And how it's serving as a house battery is this. I've uh, installed a wire from here that goes to a fuse. This is a 30, I think it's a 30 amp fuse, inline fuse. Connects to this uh, black cable that I routed through here on through to the back to the inverter itself. Then I took a line from the um, black or the negative and ran it down <laughs> under here to a screw and screwed it in to make direct metal to metal contact with the chassis of the van. What that did was create a complete circuit which allows the inverter to be turned on and off and you can see the battery right now is showing 12.6. 12.8 is full. This battery is not holding a full charge but still adequate and considering it came with the van I'm going to go ahead and keep using it. Anyhow uh, we should be able to drive around and cook with the system but the problem is this, if you leave the system connected like this and you run the inverter or a fan or something off, off this unit using the um, USB ports that are plugged in right here that have been attached, you'll drain the battery. And since the battery is a vehicle starting battery, that's a problem. What well, could be a problem. I mean, if you had to do this on an emergency basis and you just reminded yourself to disconnect or shut off the inverter when you're not using it, you can save, you know, electricity. You can save power that way. But if you still run the 12 volts, you're draining from the vehicle battery. If you're only doing something like charging your phone overnight, that probably won't be an issue. But if you're running like a fan or some other um, high draw device, you run the risk of draining your battery to the point where your vehicle won't start. Well, what we're gonna do today is we're gonna fix the system by adding a house battery. And for the house battery, essentially, I've got an RV battery here that um, I pulled from Little Blue 2. Little Blue 2 had a house battery system, which is this one here. And it is, um, I think, like a 114 amp hour RV battery. It's an Everstart Max 29DC. It's 114 amp hours, 12 volts. And the difference between this and a regular car starting battery is this battery is designed to be used in um, boats and RVs. It's not designed for um, really cranking up the um, car engine, although you could use it for that. It's mostly designed to be used like uh, for recreational stuff where you're pulling the power down almost every day and then charging it back up. Whereas a vehicle battery is designed to generate electricity um, for cranking and you know then charging back up pretty much. So this is a better battery to get for a house battery, and it's what I did end up getting. It says it's 114 amp hours, um, which means that if you drew one amp per hour, now this fan draws like about one amp per hour, it's a 0 0.8, but round it up to one amp per hour. That means I can run that fan for, um, if I ran it for 10 hours, it would be, um, let's see, eight amps, right? No. 0.8 yeah let's, let's say one amp hour that means in one hour I draw one amp so in 10 hours I would draw 10 amps I could essentially run this fan for like 100 hours but that would totally drain the battery and that would kill it um, from what I understand you're not supposed to let a battery drain beyond 70% or so of its capacity and at that I'm not exactly sure how much would be on here, how much would remain, but I do know that they say that you should not let a battery drain down to less than, um, let me show you in here. So it says 12.6 right now. This should essentially not drop below 12.1. If it drops down below 12.1, then I could be killing the battery. So that's how I know I would need to charge and kind of shut down my, um, my fans and other devices if I don't want to kill the battery. So, but what I found is with this large battery here, I'm able to run two fans all night without a problem. I could probably run them for two or three days without a problem. I haven't tested it though, and don't really need to, but um, 
with two fans running and this battery, it's more than adequate. As far as cooking, I do know that if you try to run it off this system, it'll probably drain in about 10 to 15 minutes or so. Um, and then you might end up killing your battery. It's best to um, have this battery hooked up to the vehicle battery and charging so that you can um, generate electricity even as you're pulling electricity from the house battery. With that said, we're going to go ahead and add a switch now to connect the vehicle battery here which gets charged when the engine is running through the um, alternator right here. That little silver thing right there spins and it generates electricity and sends it to this battery and charges it. While it's doing that, it will also send it through this line and come to the inverter. But what we're gonna do is pull the power here from the inverter and run it to um, the positive here on the battery. So that'll charge this battery and then um, we're also going to put the negative from there and charge it up, you know, run it up to the negative on the inverter. And that'll uh, connect this battery up to the vehicle battery up there up front, which means when that battery is charging, this one is charging too. Uh, the problem is this. When you pull the power, you're pulling it from both batteries. This one as well as the one up front. So you still run the risk of um, running out of electricity, running out of power, stored power in the battery, because you're pulling power from both batteries. And that's where this comes into play. This little switch that I bought. It is a household switch. I know people um, who are experienced with this say you should use a 12 volt, um, 12 DC, 12 volt, yeah, 12 volt um, DC, um, switch rated at maybe 20 or 30 amps which I did try but it melted so I'm gonna go ahead and use this um, household switch which says um, it's really rated at um, 15 amps and 120 volts AC only is what it says on it but it's the same one that I used in little blue too and it had no problems so I'm gonna go ahead and use it again now what I've done is I've cut a hole here so that I can mount the switch and I'm gonna put a plate on there and that will allow me to connect this vehicle battery, I mean the house battery here, the RV battery, to the vehicle battery to be charged and disconnected when I um, am using it at night so that this battery, if it gets drained down, won't pull power from the um, vehicle battery. That way my car can always start. And in an emergency, if this is charged up and my vehicle battery's dead, I should be able to throw this switch to connect the two batteries and then um, the electricity, the power from this battery will go to charge up that battery in the engine and allow me to start the vehicle. At least that's the plan. So without further ado, let's go ahead and do the installation. Here you can see I've connected the wiring. A little tip, uh, make sure you have the switch turned off when you're doing this so that you don't have a spark when you hook these two together. Um, so at this point, we are connected. It is currently on um, off. And if we turn this on, see, nothing happens. But when we switch it on, now the battery from the um, vehicle should be running power through here. We should be able to turn it on. And you can see the system comes on as expected. Now, we're still not hooked up to the vehicle, I mean the house battery, so what we need to do is run the um, negative from here to the negative here, and the positive from there, focusing issues here, the positive to the positive here, which we're going to do right now. I've uh, turned the power off. We just turned it on to make sure that it connects and works, and the power is um, turned off now. And what we're going to do is hook the wires up to each of these and then connect it to those. And the reason we're doing this, I don't want to have those live and then try to connect here and get myself, get myself electrocuted. <laughs> so I'm just going to put the, um, the jumper thingy, these guys here, onto here first and then clamp it on there. That's a lot easier to do than the other way. All right, I've uh, connected the red, the positive connection here, to the red on here, 
and I've connected the black or negative to the negative. But you can see nothing still comes on because there is no power to the system. Because the um, switch is still off. And there's no power hooked up to the inverter. So at this point, get that there so we don't have a complete circuit until we're ready. I'm going to go ahead and test it out by hooking up the red here to the red. So we're going to try hooking it up to this one here. Clamp that on. Okay, then we're going to go ahead and clamp the black or the negative to the black. Which will probably spark when I put it on here. You can see that little spark. That means electricity is flowing through. So now the inverter should come on when I turn it on. What's powering the inverter now? Let's take a look. It says 11.6. You can see this battery needs to be charged back up. This is the house battery. And it's been sitting, um, and I've used it a little bit without charging it back up. And that's why it says 11.6 instead of our 12.5. So right now, we're running the inverter off the... Um, the house battery and so the system is working correctly now this is 11.6 and if I turn this on right here the two batteries will be connected and you can see now it says 12.2 which means this battery is now pulling power from our vehicle battery and it is being charged up from that other battery that's what's happening so what I'm going to do is um, start the system up to show you what happens when I try to charge up both batteries. First thing I'm going to do for safety right now is I'm going to go ahead and turn off this switch. So we're now back to, so it says 11.9 and 11.8, it's dropping. But it's already charged up 0 0.2. Remember it said 11.6, now it says 11.8 because it pulled some power from the vehicle battery. But I am going to start up the, the van right now, Rusty Iron Man. And once I do... The engine will spin the alternator, turn off all this stuff, then the alternator, see as the engine spins, it makes this, it uses a belt to pull this um, alternator to make it spin, and that's generating electricity that's coming through and charging up this battery. Then it's pulling power from this battery here, the positive, coming on back through our fuse, which will blow if it draws too fast, too much, down to here to our switch, which currently is off. And that's why our um, system says 11.7. You know, remember it said 11.8, but now it's dropping to 11.7 because there wasn't much power in here. But watch what happens when I switch it on. Now the two batteries are connected. So I basically have two batteries connected through the system. I have the vehicle battery, which is up in the engine compartment, and I have the house battery. And notice it says 13.1. Because what's happening now is the electricity that's being generated by this alternator in here is charging up this battery as well as my house battery. And now it says 13.2. Usually when it's fully charged, it'll get to 13.6 or 13.8, is what my experience was with um, Little Blue 2. So we have a fully configured um, system right now for uh, running a house battery that will charge off the um, vehicle's alternator. And I have a switch that I can connect or disconnect. Uh, those of you who have a little bit more money and don't want to deal with the manual switch, you can get a battery isolator. And what happens is an isolator is essentially a switch that's automatic. It connects the two batteries when the um, alternator is running, when the vehicle's running. But as soon as you shut off the um, power from the alternator, okay, this battery will no longer be connected to the other battery. This one here. It's like switching it off automatically. So this battery charges up whenever the car is running. But when you turn off the car, this battery no longer charges. And what that allows you to do is um, use this battery to power the system, you know, your, your vehicle, um, house system here back here for the fan and everything else without draining the, um, the vehicle's um, battery. So that's what an isolator does. We are not using an isolator, we're using a simple 57 cent switch.
with a 57 cent face plate that I got from Walmart. So now it's just a matter of me assembling everything and letting the system charge. And then I have a fully functional house battery system inside Rusty Iron Van. Just an FYI, there was a tab here that was for a ground screw. But since there's no real ground here on this vehicle, it's just positive and negative on DC. I went ahead and broke the tab off so that I can try to get it into this hole. The idea is to get it to um, go flush in here nice and neat, put the screws in to mount it, then mount the faceplate. For those who are curious as to how I mount the switch, just so you know, I basically ran the, the cable on behind the back and out the sides here. And then I'm just going to screw in diagonal screws. I'm not even going to use four. I'm just using diagonal screws here. They were just regular sharp screws that I screwed all the way through. And I'm holding it to hold the unit in place. And then we're just going to put the switch on here and use the mounting screws. And we should be done. It's not pretty, but it's functional. And it was quick. And it was less than $2. Here then is the finished product. I put the screws in. Battery right now, when I turn this on, you're gonna see it's gonna be low because it's um, coming off the house battery. 11.8, because it needs to be charged up. When I switch it on, the two systems are connected now, the vehicle battery and the house battery. You can see it says 12.2, which is still not fully charged because the house battery is now charging off the vehicle battery. It'll go up to 12.3, 12.4, whatever. Um, but this battery, meanwhile, is draining right now. But um, when I drive and I have the switch on like that, the two systems will be connected and this battery, as well as the, well, not this battery, this battery here, as well as this battery here in the engine will charge up and we are fully functional.